So first, I need to introduce myself. So my name is Safi Ansari, but my full name is Muhammad Safi Rahman Ansari, and uh, I am like around 22 years old. And uh, I came from Turkey, like uh, for Rasmus thing, as I told before you. So it's like uh, a good experience to study quality engineering with Professor Carol. And uh, first of all, I need to thank my professor to provide me an opportunity to speak about this topic. Quality engineering, although it is a new subject for me, uh, I didn't study this before, but as because it is so much uh, in, uh, linked with the mechanical engineering field, I hope you people know about that. So I guess it is a essential subject to study in engineering. So let's begin with the quality engineering here. Are like, I have prepared a presentation with some of the topics like introduction, principles, quality engineering, quality management tools, important condition. Well, I will not discuss everything else because it will get boring, so I will discuss most important of them. So let's begin with the first slide. So the first thing is introduction to quality engineering. So what basically quality engineering is? Quality engineering is a branch of engineering which is related to the manufacturing of quality products. Like it aims to reduce, reduce and eliminate the defects, problems and errors like occurring in the manufacturing of products. So for that we need to look upon different cycles, different methods, techniques in order to eliminate this and understanding the customer satisfaction. So for that, I have some major terms I will discuss, like one is quality planning. What quality planning is? Quality planning is to plan the quality of product throughout the whole process. The, se the second is quality control. So quality control basically is to control and to monitor and uh, accountability of the uh, production quality throughout the whole process. Then we have quality assurance. So in quality assurance, we need to apply certain techniques, methods, and different type of processes in order to reduce the defects and improve the product efficiency. Then we have reliability engineering. In reliability engineering, we need to ensure that all the setup and process needs to operate in a reliable way in certain conditions. Then we have risk management. Risk management basically is to analyze, to uh, analyze and understand the possible risk and errors in a system as because we need to eliminate that in order to increase the product efficiency. I hope I'm not speaking very fast, you people are getting what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So if you have any question, you can uh, like uh, ask me, no problem. So moving further, the key principle of quality engineering. So quality engineering based upon like various factors, there are more, more factors we need to discuss, but here are some few and important ones I have highlighted here in my presentation. So I will discuss them. Number one is customer focus. So what customer focus is, is uh, like customer satisfaction is the most important thing. So if we will address the customer needs, like what the customer uh, expectation from our product, if we will address them, the customer satisfaction will turn into promising customer. Like if the customer turns into a promising customer, hence it will like, it will, it will increase our loyalty. So having a communication with the customer is the main thing. The second one is continuous improvement. Doesn't matter how, how good your product is there is always a certain type of space in the product to improve. So if you will keep improving and improving and evolving the product with respect to the market, our organization will remain competitive in a dynamic environment. The third one is data driven decision making. So decision making in the quality engineering is one of the most important tasks. So decision making with data driven. So if we have data like collection of data of any certain organization, so we can execute and make good decisions. Like if we have a decision, if we have a data from past, so we can analyze that data and we can pre predict the solution, possible solutions for the uh, upcoming problems. So data driven decision making is the most important thing when we have leadership involvement. So in any organization, leadership or head is required in order to implement certain policies and tasks in an organization. So for that we need leadership involvement. Then we have employee involvement. So what employee is? So what, so what employee involvement is like, in an organization, most of the employees are working. We have a certain group of leaders, heads, and, and, and the employees. So in employee involvement, if we will in, engage the employees with us, if we will provide them the ownership, if we will, uh, sorry, if we will provide them the values, they will feel their stake, their, their stake and their, their stake and their ownership in an organization, so that they will work more efficiently. So in, uh, employee involvement is also uh, as important as leadership involvement. So in the last, we have systematic approach to management. Systematic approach is like to approach or address any problem in a systematic way to eliminate the problems occurring and it's like considering processes in the context of overall system. So for now, any problems? Any questions? Okay, let me move further. 
So what quality engineering framework is? In quality engineering framework, uh, framework we have PDCS cycle. What PDCS cycle is? It's like plan, do, check, and act. In plan, do, check, and act, first the heading is like plan. What the plan is? So in in order to execute any any anything in a, in an organization, first we the first step is to make a plan. What is plan? Like plan is to prepare a, a certain type of strategy in order to address the objectives the objectives, the aims of an organization in the shadowing of customer satisfaction and organization policies. The second thing is do. So after planning a certain strategy, we can, we need to execute the plan, which, which means do. We need to, we need to do something. So we need to execute the plan we have made in the stage before. Then we have check. What check means is to take the accountability, monitoring the result, uh, monitoring the, monitoring the result based upon the plan we have executed in the stages before. Then we have act. What lastly act? Act is like to make or take the correct action on the correct results in the strategy we have planned before. So it is a cycle PDC. The four factors are linked with each other. They totally are based upon each other. So first we need to plan, then we need to do, then we need to check, and then we need to act. You are getting one right, sir? I hope. Okay. Any further? Okay, then we have QMS system. QMS system stands for quality management system. So it is also a certain type of topic we need to discuss here. So there are uh, major uh, definitions I need to highlight in the quality management system. The one is quality policy. What policy quality policy stands for? What quality policy means is to make or highlight the highlight the organization uh, organization qualities efforts to uh, qualities efforts with the commitment to the stakeholder. The second one is quality objectives. Quality objectives means to highlight the objectives, uh, objectives, aims, and goals of an organization. Then we have document control. So proper document control is essential as because it ensures consistency and facilitate compliance, and it increases the product efficiency and regulation. Then we have risk-based thinking. Risk-based thinking is uh, uh, risk-based thinking is also important as because risk-based thinking ask and uh, it like ensures the organization for the possible risk and it like improves the uh, decision making like if we will do the risk based thinking so it will improve our uh, improve our decision making because we are considering all the aspects of risk that can occur in the future then we have monitoring and measurements okay so monitoring and measurements and risk based thinking are a bit similar because they are both are like identifying the areas of risk and trying to improve that Internal audits, what internal audit means in an organization is to highlight the area need to get improvement. As because if some like if, if any area of an organization or of the plan is weak, then internal audit is to be done to make and address that area to, to get improvement. Process approach is related to internal audits. It's like the problem or the area which have been uh, like uh, which have been highlighted in internal audit to make improvement. Process approach is to is to address that uh, area for the improvement to make it improve. Uh, uh, completing the internal audits, so it's, it's like that. Then we have some tools and techniques uh, in quality engineering. Well, there are many. I will discuss the major one. So the most important one. I, I don't know if you people have heard about Six Sigma. No. Okay, so it's new for you and me as well. As well. So let's discuss Six Sigma. Six Sigma mainly have uh, stand for like Six Sigma. Mainly it have five factors, which is like define, check, uh, analyze, control, and uh, one and I'm also forgetting about that. So Six Sigma basically aims, what it aims for, it Six Sigma basically aims to eliminate the defects and increase the profi uh, proficiency of the product. The, the second one is the root cause analysis. It's like, it is already defined in the name, root cause analysis. Root cause analysis means to address and analyzes the deep rooted cause behind any problem. If, if there is any problem or any issue or any mistake, so we need to do the root based analysis to get to the deep rooted cause, like why the problem is occurring. Then we have FEMIA. FEMIA stands for Failure Mode effect, uh, Effects Analysis. What FEMIA means is to highlight the possible failures. As because it's like failure mode, so it, it means to highlight the possible failures, possible mistakes, possible flaws in the design or the process of the products. And we have then like control charts, histograms. It's like to analyze the data in a visual form. You know about histograms all? And, and the charts. So it's like analyzing the data through visualization, eliminating the defects and improving improving the uh, stability and predictability of processes. So it's like that. Then we have six elements of data quality. Well, it's uh, I just copy paste the image, but I have studied regarding the topic. Six elements of of data quality means accuracy, completeness, 
consistency, integrity, validity, uniqueness. They all are different factors. I will just brief some of them. Accuracy means how accurate your data is. As because in an organization, if you are working, your data should be accurate regarding the product. As because the accuracy of data ensures that the information is correct. The information is correct in order to execute any any type of plan. So the data accuracy is so much important. Then we have uh, completeness. Completeness is the fulfillment of data. Like we need to prefer a complete data over a, in, over an incomplete data. So it's like that. Then we have Validity. Validity is like to make the data validate. The data should be valid and the invalid data should be avoided. It's like uh, then AI system we have these days because like if you apply in, a, in any organization, AI data matches your profile with a certain type of job. If your skills are not met, matching up with that, it will eliminate your profile. That means it is the type of uh, validity of data. If your uh, if your resume, if your if you do not uh, consist of uh, several skills which is not matching up with your profile of uh, of any organization, then it will eliminate. So it's like a kind of uh, data validity. We can use integrity, uniqueness is uh, like to 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 avoid the repetition of the data. Like if to make the data unique. So it's like that. Consistency is also to like uh, to make the data engage, connected, and reflect the same information through all the system in an organization. So six, uh, six elements of data quality describe these. Then if we can move forward, then we have importance of data. I have discussed these things before, like root cause analysis, customer satisfaction is the same thing. So we have quality assurance and quality control. I don't. Uh, I hope we. Ha I have de defined quality assurance and quality control uh, before. So I. So for for now, I will discuss the main thing which are both in common. As because I have uh, told before uh, that the difference between quality assurance and quality control. So for now. What the things are common in between quality control and quality assurance is to increase the production, to increase the customer, to gain the customer customer trust, to gain the customer interest in the product, to reduce the cost and reduce the cost and in, increase the prof proficiency of the product. So most of them are like to 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 fulfill the organization objectives and eliminate the defects and flaws in the system. Then. We can do a case study. I will read out first. I will read out a problem statement. A leading automotive manufacturer aimed to improve the quality of its vehicles and reduce defects. The company implemented a comprehensive quality engineering program that incorporated that incorporated Six Sigma methodology. Methodology. Yeah. So a leading automotive uh, manufacturer. We have some challenges here. The the company is facing is like the high defect rates. Like if the if there are defects in an automotive. Automotive industry, the the customer will surely complain about that. So we the challenges we are facing a high defect rate, inconsistency, and the customer complaints. So how we will how we will address these problems? So first we need to take actions. First we will apply Six Sigma implementation. What Six Sigma is? I have told you before. Six Sigma depends upon some factors. So we need to apply Six Sigma method for eliminate the defects. In order to eliminate the defects, we will also apply root cause analysis. What for, for but for what? Root cause analysis in order to address the base, uh, the root, the deep rooted base problems behind the problem the automotive manufacturing is facing, and we will do uh, a, a collaboration with the supplier. Like the incoming goods from the supplier should be in a good quality as well. The results. What will be the results? Will we will apply these factors. The result will significantly changes. How? The defect rate will significantly decreases as because we have applied these method to it in order to address the problem. The defect rates will decrease. Customer complaint will decrease. If we will address a customer complaints and their problem, it will surely increase their trust and uh, and interest in the in the product, and increasing efficiency. Increasing efficiency will reduce the cost in a simultaneous way. So customer uh, so cost uh, savings and efficiency will increase. So I hope you understand this case. If I, if anyone has a pro uh, question regarding this. Um, forward. Uh, there are some future trends. Uh, you can study these. Uh, these are some of the basic one. I have given the uh, like uh, example of uh, AI method, like matching the profile with the organization. So it's like AI machine, and we have blockchain testing, uh, uh, testing robotic process. So it's like the to like to improve and to 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 move the quality engineering with the future. So m m most of them with is based upon AI. And the robotics and blockchain testing, so it's related to that we need to focus. Then it's a conclusion, and uh, in the conclusion, I will discuss the quality engineering is the same thing I have uh, discussed before. It's related to the, to the quality of product, addressing the customer need, addressing the problems in the in the in, in the product regarding uh, the manufacturing of the product. We need to 
we need to address the customer satisfaction. That's the main thing in order to improve our product. We need to apply Six Sigma, root cause and acid, and FEMIA, and different methods in order to address the problems. And the results are significantly, I have uh, mentioned before, in the case study before. So for now, I, uh, I have ended the first topic, that, that is quality engineering. If someone has any question, they can ask me right now. Well, I will move forward with uh, the another presentation. I hope I'm not uh, making you bored. <laughs> Can so, so, group, uh, you like uh, ask now or after second because there's, there will be the second part? After okay. second part, okay. Sure. Okay, Okay. so this is SMAT method. SMAT method. Uh, I don't know if people have heard about SMAT method or not. SMAT method is one of the important vital uh, method in the engineering, led to the quality engineering as well. So, what SMAT stands for? SMAT stands for single, uh, single minute exchange of dye. What single minute exchange of dye, what you are getting an idea of after hearing the word single method exchange of dye. So it's single single minute, single minute doesn't need to make a, it means to make a rapid change over, but not in, in a second or in a minute. Of course, the, the, the process which is taking hours and hours, we will apply a smack method to reduce its time to minutes, in some minutes. So it is like a rapid change over, but for what? In the manufacturing lines, in the in, in the different lines of manufacturing of the products, like if they are, for example, if they are two plants of like Samsung and iPhone, if, if they are plants like BMW and Mercedes, so we can use a uh, smart method in order to reduce the rate, uh, uh, reduce the ch uh, time changeover, as because time is the key in order to in order to prepare the product. So it's to minimize the time required to switch a production line. The second objective of this is to achieve rapid changeovers. As I, as I defined before. So the primary focus of method is to convert m as many changeovers as possible with the span of time, with the reducing the time and re reducing the cost and increasing the efficiency of the product. Mainly, smart method works in between different lines of manufacturing, different products. So we will discuss it uh, in, in the further. Okay. So I am repeating and repeating quick changeovers, quick changeovers. What quick changeover really mean? What is the importance of quick changeover? So here I have, I have highlighted like the quick changeover is is uh, plays a vital role in in this method single minute exchange of dye as because in in, in, in the quick changeovers means to means to make a rapid change where you are preparing a manufacturing a product so we need to uh, if there is is the customization or we need to uh, make a change in between the lines so uh, the the quick changeover plays a vital role well I will describe some of the major terms here so you will uh, have a better view the first is reduce time uh, reduce downtime. As I have al uh, already told, like quick changeovers minimizes the span of time. So decreasing the time, increasing the pro uh, increasing the production time. So when the time uh, the quick changeover decreases the time, so it in alternatively increases the production time, which will increase the product efficiency. The second is increase productivity. So the faster the productivity, the better the product is, and the higher output enables more product, which will address the customer needs in the in the in the organization. So the third one is cost reduction. So as the time reduces, as the time reduces, it will alternatively reduce the cost of preparation, the cost of manufacturing. As because the time decreases, it will provide more time for the production efficiently. Adaptability to customization. Uh, adaptability to customization is a, uh, is an important topic to discuss. Like adaptability to customization, like if some if uh, if a, if an industry, if an organization is preparing a product, but I, uh, individual customer needs and customization. Like I like this thing, I like this design. Can you customize it with that? So smart play, smart method plays uh, here uh, important role is because quick changeovers address this problem. Like if uh, it addresses the customization customization needs of an individual customer. So if you will address the individual customers uh, customization, so the customers interest will increase in the product. Hence, it will increase uh, the efficiency of the product. Of efficiency in the product and between the production configuration and meeting the specific needs of individual customers. So it means that and uh, quick changeovers, it's the same thing and importance of quick changeover lies in their ability to enhance operational efficiency, increases flexibility and contributing the efficiency of the product. So let's move forward. So here are some key elements for SMAT method, uh, for some uh, SMAT, SMAT uh, events. It's like uh, support, people, communication, and scope. So basically, they all are linked with each other. I will discuss few of them in the in the this slide. So that is the uh, importance of SMAT method, and we have here some key key concepts of SMAT. 
So let's discuss the concepts. So first, in order to uh, understand the concepts of SMET method, first we need to first we need to like make a setup for for like if you are planning to uh, if you are planning to uh, like for, for 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 any product in an organization or in an industry, first we need to make, uh, prepare a startup. Then we need to analyze analyze the startup like the like the the manufacturing of the product. We need to analyze that if we are going in the correct direction or not. Then we need to we need to understand. We need to analyze. The, there are two separate ways. There are external and there are internal elements. External elements are those which are going in, uh, in, in a running machine. Internal elements are those which are which need to address in in a when the machine is stopped. So we need to separate those elements, like which, which are external and which are internal elements. After that, we need to we need to try our best. We need to like uh, make possibility changing external elements into internal one so that it can reduces the time. Then we need to like simplify the method, and we can apply the key concept of SMET method. So basically, it depends uh, depend on some steps as I told before. There are important method, SMET, important steps in the SMET method are the same I have described before. So both of the slides are interlinked with each other. The methodology aims for continuous improvement, as I told before, urging uh, urging organization to regular review, refining procedures to sustain and and enhance the efficiency gains. So it is related to that. Then we have a case study, like a, we have a case study in uh, uh, in quality engineering to make you people better understand regarding this. I have prepared some case study. I will discuss few of them. The one is Toyota. Okay, Toyota, a company we all know, it is a automotive industry. So Toyota company is uh, uh, automotive industry. So how to apply smart method in this? In Toyota company, like if you will apply the SMAT method, so it will reduce the uh, time, ch rapid time change over while it's in the stamping machine. It will reduce the time and it will increase the product efficiency, eliminating the defects. Like it will, as I told before, it will reduce the time like over an hour to just few minutes, as I've mentioned before. So this is a good, te good technique to uh, to set up to the use of standardization process and parallel operations in the in the industry. Then we have fast food industry. We all know we are all are eating fast food these days. So whenever you go to any restaurant or uh, any any restaurant, so there is a menu. So like if there are a group of friends, then everyone has their own choice to to, to make an order. So switching between menus, there the smart method plays a key role here. Like it reduces the time in between changing the selection of the menus. I have, I have highlighted here. Like takes to switch between different menus by standardizing the of the process and. Parallel work of the employees as well. So here we can apply smart method, method as well. Then we have printing industry, pharmaceutical manufacturing, aerospace, reducing the set set up time for machining center. Like smart smart player plays and aims the same motive and objective in all the industries, just acting in a different way. So if we move further, let's discuss the benefits of smart method. Uh, I I am repeating again and again. It's the same thing. Smart method reduces the reduces the time reduces the cost addressing the customer customer needs improving the customer interest improving the product efficiency reducing the time higher profit more productivity more product productivity reduces the cost as mentioned before so most of the uh, link to the customer satisfaction as because snap method is like to reduce time in order to address the customer satisfaction the main aim is to facilitate the customer if we will move forward with that we have some implementation tips like how to implement smart methods we have discussed the case studies before i have given the example so here you will have a better overview for how to implement uh, smart methods so first is this management commitment so in order to in order to apply the smart method first we need to gather the resources in order to apply the smart method at a at a particular at a particular role then we have cross functional teams so what what cross functional teams means like if in an organization if we need to apply smart methods we should have we need to arrange our cross functional teams which will include engineers staff manager operators and different employees in order involving in this in this uh, in this stage for the applying smart methods and as because these collaboration brings the improvement of the process then we have training and ed education. Like if we have gathered the cross functional teams, we need to provide them training and ed education regarding the SMAP method. But uh, like to highlight the objectives, to highlight the aims, to highlight the motive, like why SMAP method is applying and what will be the benefits of that. Then we have initial assessment. Like after preparing a plan, a setup, arranging the cross functional teams, we need to analyze and 
and perform an assessment as to to measure like if the pro if the if the plan or if the program we have prepared is going in a correct way or not. So we need to we need to perform initial assessment so that it will measure the improvement and flaws occurring in the system. At last, we have Pareto analysis. <laughs> what Pareto analysis is is to identify the most time-consuming activities. Uh, like I have mentioned before, what most uh, what what we mean by most time-consuming activities. To simplify the external elements and internal ex uh, internal elements, so after that we need to we need to simplify and like possible changeovers to convert the external to internal activities, so that it will reduce the time, reduce the time for the changeover uh, time consuming activities. So we will focus more efforts on time consuming activities to reduce those those time times which are consuming more in just few tasks. So Pareto analysis is a kind of this analysis. Then. Uh, I have I not made it the goal regarding the topic of quality engineering and uh, uh, smart method. I have prepared like a brief report because these both topics are so much like uh, uh, ha consider various of uh, major terms and conditions and different elements uh, related to the topic. But I have gathered I like I have tried my best to gather most of the important uh, information to understand a person who is not who is not like uh, known about this these topics like quality engineering and smart method. Even though I didn't knew about this before, so I have studied and I have prepared the most brief uh, report for my side. So I hope you will have liked this and understand the concept with, uh, concept regarding this math method and quality engineering. So if you have if you people have any doubts, any questions. Or need to ask any example, or need to discuss anything. I am here to answer that regarding quality engineering or math method. So this is from my side. I hope uh, you people have liked it, and thank you for your attention. <laughs> any questions, group? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I have one. Okay, sure. Uh, how much money we have to spend to implement these uh, methods, all of these methods? Okay, so that's a good question, and that's out of the out of the box question. Like, how much uh, money is needed? Okay, so it depends. It depends yes. on the like on the organization you are working at. Well, if you will apply these methods, it will cost you like nothing, I guess. So, like the zero is because uh, they it it needs a collaboration between organization employees, heads, and all these. So. It is like basically the techniques and methods. So if you will work efficiently, it will it will not need uh, any cost for for sure. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. So this is the magic of the uh, quality management that uh, these methods don't cost nothing. Yeah. And also you also uh, show us that uh, these methods, especially especially SMAT, is using also in the services. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Safar give us the example of fast food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially, we can use the SMAT methods in um, r customer relationship management. Yeah, so uh, how fast to uh, the the duration between the customers, yes? how to build the connection with them, and uh, try to uh, do it them faster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, how does methods uh, to improve? How does methods? Uh, Make uh, employers more satisfaction. Okay, so how like if you are asking about smart method, so as a as my professor have highlighted, like we first we need to address the customer problem. Like if uh, the the way I have gave the example regarding the fast food. So if you are going to a restaurant and if you are, if you are changing the menu, if you are ordering some food, so the quick changeover between the menus didn't lose your interest. Like if, if you will take a lot of time to to uh, in the changeovers of the menus, the customer will lose the interest in that. So the in order to keep the customer interest uh, in a in a in a firm way. We need to apply the smart method. That's because if you will keep the interest of the customer in the product in an organization or uh, in anything, the customer will uh, will be a promising customer. So it will increase the loyalty. So this is how it facilitates the customers. Okay. So I hope you have, I have answered. Okay. Any? So some of these methods can be used in biotechnology labs. Right? Of course. Yeah. Most of them, I guess. So. Yes. Like yes. first, we need to. Understand like where you need to apply smart method or PDC cycle or, or anything else. First, we need to understand the topic or the objectives like what you need to achieve from them, what the problems are occurring. Then we, we have to apply the smart methods so it can work with good techniques and addressing the problems. So it's like that. It can apply to anywhere, but yeah. we need to first understand it. Okay, anything?
Anybody? Okay, thank you very much. Hey, thank you, okay. It was a really pleasure that we, we have uh, this possibility to uh, meet with you and uh, you show us this presentation and uh, uh, give us this information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.